Hey everyone, we are coming to a close on 2015. I wanted to share with you something that is really important when you are setting goals and especially when it comes to your weight loss or your fitness goals. Because for me, I started setting goals back in 2012 when I first got, got into health and fitness. And this was something that I was advised to do by the person who influenced me into getting started on my journey. Goals become an addiction only if you actually reach them. And w one thing that I've learned through lots of studying and reading is that when you actually reach a goal, it triggers things in your brain. It releases dopamine. It gives you that high. It's so such an incredible feeling of accomplishment whenever you reach a goal that you put on paper. It's so important when you're writing a goal uh, out that you don't just type it out or put it in your phone, but you actually physically write it with your own hands. When you do that, you your thoughts just start to flow. Uh, you feel really compelled to push yourself more as you keep doing this over and over and over and over again. And there is a power to writing it down, you know, with a pen or a pencil because you have it in your hands. It's something that's written out, it's well thought out because it takes time to sit there and write things out and think about it. It doesn't take as much time, I don't think, to just put it in your phone. But it's also great because you can actually look at it from year to year. I save all the goals that I uh, have written out and it's cool to look back and it's also eye-opening too because last November I did what I normally do at the end of each year is I set out goals that I intend to reach in the, the coming year and you know some people call these New Year's resolutions but this is just something big because I am used to setting goals daily, weekly, monthly, um, long-term and for the next year um, and annual goals and about halfway through 2015, I realized that I was nowhere close to reaching any of the goals I set. And in fact, if you look at the goals that I wrote out last November, I actually added a few things to it, but I only reached three goals. And it all had to do with trips that I could qualify for through the business that I'm in. And you know, that's great. I obviously worked hard to qualify for these things. However, I was all sitting around recreation and so I was able to really hone in on that and instead of beating myself up over not, you know, setting or following through or accomplishing all of the goals, I really, really realized where I was lacking and that recreation needs to be something that takes the back burner in 2016 to reach my goals. One thing is when you're setting goals, you want to make sure that you set them and you put a deadline on them because if you just say, oh, I'd like to get healthy or I'd like to get fit, well, you know, is this a lifelong goal? Um, are you giving yourself two years to lose 10 pounds? You know, what is it? And another thing is being specific that I want to lose 10 pounds by a certain date. And so you have to understand too that sometimes you're not going to hit those goals. So you kind of have to have that balance that you can't just be like, oh, if it happens, it happens. And you also can't be so hard pressed that it, you know, set maybe triggers depression or frustration or, you know, you get angry at yourself. But, you know, set realistic goals and give yourself a little bit of slack that sometimes you hit a goal, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer and other times it happens a lot faster. So for me, uh, 2015 was just a huge, huge cluster. Um, everything in my life seemed to go wrong. I had stopped doing all the things that I was doing in 2012 and 2013 that had made me feel better and helped me become successful. So when I realized I wasn't going to reach any of my goals that I set out for, um, instead of just throwing in the towel, instead of being angry at myself, instead of saying, oh, I'll just wait till the start of 2016, I got started right then. I started working on myself first. I started refocusing on what I had done in the past to get to that point where I felt great about myself, about my mental state, my physical state, my health, my relationships that I had, and I got to work. So 107 days ago, I was not fit at all, and that is something that uh, is you know, a big, oh my God, because I work in the health and fitness industry. But it was affecting my confidence as a fitness professional. It was affecting relationships in my life. It was, you know, definitely t it took my confidence level down um, 
quite a bit. And so I decided I'm going to start doing what I did before. I'm going to start over from scratch. I'm not going to be frustrated I'm starting over from scratch. I'm going to look at this as a new beginning. And even if it was at the end of the year, I considered it a blessing because this setback really set me up for a great comeback. And this comeback is going to be better because I have a list of what not to do. And I also know what worked in the past. You put those together, you working against me. So I had to work even harder than before. And, you know, I'm not going to say that I wasn't, I haven't been frustrated um, because I realized that I set this goal that at 156 in my mind where I was perfectly, or not perfect, but I felt really confident was when I was at the 135 to 137 range. So I thought, okay, that is something that's totally doable. So if I'm starting off at 156, I would love to lose 20 pounds by the end of the year so that I start off January 1st at, you know, 135, 36, 37. Well, I've been pushing really hard and, you know, I've been going back and forth between 142 and 144, and I've just been frustrated. I, uh, you know, and I tell people not to get frustrated with the scale. And it's not even that the number defines me. It's the fact that I am one of those people that if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I hate when people don't follow through. I hate when they let me down, and I don't like to let myself down. I've done that enough in my life. So... I realized that this is something that's silly. And so I realized I need to stop doing that. That, you know, I've come a long ways mentally, physically, and emotionally. And I have so many non skill victories and so many things to be proud of over the, you know, last three and a half months that I've been regrouping and regaining momentum and getting my life back together that I can't let that one goal define me. But I got on the scale today and I weigh 140.4 pounds, so that means I actually have the ability in the next two days before we close out the year to get into the 130s, even if it's 139.8, that's great, but you know what? I decided to write down my numbers, and I decided to really focus on that, and so I'm proud to say that in 107 days, I have stayed on track. I haven't missed any workouts. I haven't skipped any workouts. I followed a plan. I followed the schedule that comes with the programs that I've been doing. I've lost 15.6 pounds, I've lost 15 inches, and uh, six and a quarter inches are off my waist. And so that's something huge. The fact that I've stayed consistent, the fact that I have been sober, this Saturday I got retested uh, my, one of my friends, Brent, who's a national, and I had a goal to, to lose 5% in eight weeks. And everything today, I'm at 18.6% body fat. And you know what that means? That's 2.5% body fat. So that means that I lost half of my body fat goal in the first half of the program. So that means I'm right on you do. And he explained to me where he was at a really low percent of his body fat. I'm like, he's like, don't let the scale define you. Focus on, you know, what you're doing. And, and then I thought about everything that I teach the people that I work with is that, you know, really to stay on track about one, one pound a week weight loss is really what's healthy for you. So I figure in 29 days, if I lost four pounds and on top of it, two and a half percent of my body fat, then that's amazing. I'm missing this to remind yourself to not be defined by your, um, weight to focus on cutting the body fat, shedding your fat and adding muscle, increasing your strength and your endurance and more than anything, changing your mindset and just staying active and celebrating all the victories in between and not getting too tied up on your goals or your deadlines, but doing your best to hit it. But if you don't, don't let it discourage you. Don't let it uh, mentally beat yourself up because I mean I'm looking at the progress I've made in 29 days I lost three additional three inches I lost it uh, or gained inch and a half in my biceps um, and my calves and so that is huge and so that just gives me the motivation to keep moving forward so if you're frustrated with where you're at you know I hope that this my story and my experience with setting goals and you know seeming further away from them than you than I expected things that you can celebrate so that you enjoy yourself along the journey and not become just so focused on how far you have to go but focus on how far looking for help or um, somebody to help you get started or maybe even restarted if you fall fell off the wagon like I did over um, the first part of 2015 I'm here to help you uh, I have a new challenge group that's starting up on January 4th it's really great for people who are wanting to just get in a routine or for beginners or somebody who even maybe has a fitness routine already down pat and wants to add to it so we're starting on January 4th you can feel free to contact me via Facebook under Mindy Horde or fit Asian mom 
That way we can start discussing how to get you started or restarted or we can do a one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation. But prove to you that you can do it. You make the rest of what's left of 2015 the best so that you can start 2016 feeling great about yourself or at least that you have direction to go in. So have a great day.